How's it going, Don? Thanks for doing this. Uh, a couple for you. One is, is everybody healthy and ready to go as you get uh, prepared to start the exhibition next week? Uh, everybody's healthy besides uh, Lily. Lily's still, she's still out for right now. And I know that a, a lot of times you like to get your defense in first during preseason camp. So how's that all going? Or do you think that you guys are pretty close to having all of your sets down? Um, actually, we we actually we're moving we're moving steadily along. Um, um, I think for the most part, I think our our team is uh is uh, balanced um, defensively. Um, they're you know they're they're probably more committed than some of our teams in the past. Just overall, just have an understanding of uh, of how we need to play help side, ball screen stuff. So it's, it's, you know, it's refreshing to see that. It doesn't mean that it's mistake free. It just means that they they are at least aware. <laughs> they're, they're aware when there's a problem. So that's a good thing. And offensively, um, the pace, like, I, you know, I, I think in years past, I've talked about our pace being, you know, getting up and down the floor. We're, then we're, we've created that habit you know, in practice, now we have to convert it over to games. Augusta, and then we'll go to Rick. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good, sorry, I was, I'm using a different headphones. I wanted to ask, you know, with, with the exhibition coming up, what are you specifically looking for from your team in terms of just, you know, seeing kind of measuring, you know, in an exhibition, what is it that you are looking for um, in, the, in the game this week, next week? I'm just looking for for the habits that we created, just us being able to push the ball down the floor, um, and and score fairly quickly uh, with the person that is supposed to be taking a shot is taking a shot. Just finding the best shot on the floor. Um, ball movement from an offensive standpoint has been pretty good for us. Um, everybody's touching the ball. It's important for for that to take place, and then. Defensively, we need to get after. We need we need to be disruptive. We need to 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 make sure that we're exhausting ourselves because we got you know we got a lot of players to to rotate in, um, and just just some just being connected on both sides of the ball. Hey Don, um, good to see Rick you again. And then, I'm sorry, Rick, and then Keith. Hey Don, good to see you again. Uh, with your early season schedule. Um, are, are you trying to ramp up the intensity even more than uh, than normal in practice? And also, what about your post players and um, how, how is the rotation looking there? Um, the post play rotation is pretty easy. <laughs> it's the guard rotation that's uh, the most difficult. Um, I mean, I mean, we have three we have three seasoned post players, meaning. They they have more than two years of experience playing with us, and then you you, you throw in um, Camilla who is a quick learn, um, uh, and then um, Fagan. It's, it's probably in that order. You know, she's a freshman. She doesn't. She has no clue. Um, some days she gets it, and then she forgets it the next day, and she picks it back up the following day. And that's that's being a freshman. She's frustrated, um, but. I just told her, look around her. You, you, these are seasoned um, post players. It took them, you know, it took them years to get to where they are. And um, I, I know that you want to you wanna do all these things that you did in high school. Uh, it's just not happening. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that quickly. And then from a guard standpoint, I mean, there's, there, there are two-point guards and – and then six twos and threes. Man, you gotta you you gotta be productive. If you're not productive, if you haven't been productive consistently, then you're probably on that that lower you know lower in a depth chart. But they're still fighting it out. So I, I can't you know I can't say who those people are right now. Um, you know, but it's it's fair to say it's pretty competitive. Keith, and then we'll go to Matt. 
Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, so I'm going to try to squeeze in, too, since my raise hand function is not working. Uh, so generally, last year... No, that's normal, Keith. <laughs> it is. Um, last year, at times, you, you know, said you had problems getting past seven that you could trust. Obviously, the season has not started. But there's a lot more players on the roster and uh, every year brings a new challenge. How is that? Uh, I know the work is how do you feel about your depth and being able to get more, you know, players on the on the field? Yeah, we, we don't we don't have that problem anymore. We we don't. I mean there are we gonna have trouble going the other way from sixteen to nine. I mean it's it. it there won't be an issue um, with with depth. I think it, it it you know with our youngsters, they're going to have some good games and they're gonna they're gonna look terrible at times. Um, I think for us, we just have to make sure that we're we we only allow them to to be looked at in a good light. Um, practice will be for for them kind of learning what, what needs to happen out there. They they don't have a clue either, but they're good. So um, so we're going to bring them along, uh, but we're going to win basketball games first. So if they're, they're a part of that rotation, great. If they're not, they, they'll have a pretty good understanding of, of why. But we got a tough schedule, so people are going to have to really play and contribute and be productive out there to, to stay long on the floor. All right, so second question is, have you ever had a player transform their body the way Aaliyah has? And with that in mind, do you think uh, she kind of wants to slide into the four with Camila, with that Twin Towers lineup? Um, well, I mean, uh, Aaliyah came from, from a different place than, than some people. Uh, Tiffany Mitchell is one that that's probably had that transformation, um, but here's the here's here's the difference. Well, not, there's not even a difference. Um, Tiffany Mitchell and Aaliyah are different-minded people. They just, you know, they 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 want it, and they they don't mind putting the work in to develop it. And it's just not developing a skill set is developing a lifestyle of nutrition and seeing what what's best for them and where they're going. Um, as far, I mean, Aaliyah's, Aaliyah's is, is, a, is a player. You know, I, I think you can contain her to just be in the center. I mean, we, she, she probably, she, she was more of a four than, than Victoria last year because she's able to play more on a perimeter, but now not, both of them have certainly, uh, um show that they can that they're comfortable on the on the on the perimeter. Matt and then Carolyn. Don, I know Zaya, Aaliyah, Destiny, they get a lot of the attention on the national stage, but I wanted to ask you about Bree Beal, uh, who obviously is entering her junior year as well. Do you feel like she is still kind of slept on? And how have you seen her improve this offseason? Uh I mean always it's, it, you you always gonna have people like Bree Bill who are who are glues and who are uh, the unsung heroes um, of teams. And um, I think you, you do get overlooked with the layers and layers of talent that we have on this team, um, you know, but other teams seem to get get their players on list that, you know, is mind boggling, but mind boggling. But, you know, she, she embraces that role for us. Um, and she embraces that role that she plays in the public, because if you've watched us play, you'll understand the importance of of her impact. Um, even in practice, she's always talking. She's always has an understanding of what needs to take place. She's lending that experience and knowledge to some of the younger players, even probably at her expense, because, um, um, I mean, she wants to win. And she's helping players that are in her position, and that's just just selfless um, Bree. But I know she wants the attention. I know, I know she understands and knows her worth. 
um, because we we always we always let her know that. Carolyn and then Corey. Hey, Don, I want to go back to Aaliyah Boston. Uh, can you believe that was not unanimous AP? Nope. I can't. Do you can't. have any explanation? I mean, how does that happen? You know how it happens, Carolyn. I mean, listen, listen. Narratives are going to be written and and stay with all season long, and it it continues until we until we write our own. Till we write our write our own. Um, there's no way. There's no there's no way for what she's done for the past two years, let alone last year. So whoever whoever are the voters, shame on them, because they're doing a disservice to our game. And I don't know if it's to elevate one over the other, um, but there's room for unanimous um, players in our in our country when it's deemed necessary, and um, it's deemed necessary. So it's it's the same old it's the same old thing. We this is nothing new. Um, so we you know we can we're recording this. We could probably play it next year, and we'll still be saying the same things. Well, let's talk about how great a player that she is. And uh, you talked about the transformation of her body, uh, but on the court also, how has she expanded her game? Um, I mean, she she's, <laughs> I mean, she does it all, and she does it all now at a, a more efficient clip. Um, so with players like that, um, I, I think she's embracing playing in the crowd a lot more. Um, I, I think she's comfortable dribbling up the ball and driving to the basket. I think she's really just has a really good understanding of how to continue to impose her will while while sharing the ball because she's a great passer. She's a great reader of defenses. Um, she's you know she's great at understanding when people need shots, so she'll call for the ball and direct them to a shot. So, I, I mean, you know, the, the, the same way that other people just kind of marvel and talk up other players around the country, um, she she needs to be in that same, that same breath because she puts it on display, not just in practice. You know, we play a incredible schedule. You'll see her do that, knock on wood, do that, you know, when the co competition is the stiffest. And in looking at her, and you said she is, she's a great player, not just a center or a post player. Uh, and you have seen a number of different players through the tryouts with USA Basketball and all of, of that. Is there a better college player with her size in the game? No, no, and, and no argument. We don't want any arguments. No, no. And then not, my last, not arguably, no, 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 no. Absolutely, I got your absolute. <laughs> Two years ago, uh, when you brought in a number one recruiting class, you talked about how competitive practice was. With this recruiting class coming in, is it that same kind of feel? Uh, it's it, it's it's another level to that. Um, and, and it's because it's so many of them, like it's, you know, like two years ago, we could probably field, you know, a good 10 just to continue to, to just play. Like, you know, now, you know, there's grumblings over there because I mean, we, I mean, we had practice, we had a really good practice, a male practice squad. So only five players can play at a time because most of the time, you know, we're playing against them and you got 11 other players that are standing over there like do -do 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 -do, twilling their thumbs and they, they want to get into action. And then when we play against each other, um, there there are another six players over there just saying, hey, you know, I, I, I need to get some reps. So it is it is super competitive. Like 
no one wants to miss if they got, you know, an ailing ankle. They're not missing time because they know that someone's going to slip right into their, you know, their place. And uh, Raven Johnson was the first female to play in the Iverson Classic on the boys' team. Uh, yeah, what has she brought coming in as a freshman so far? Uh, I mean, Raven is is super competitive. Like, you know, she plays both sides of the basketball, um, um, and, and she's playing the toughest position. I mean, she has really good days, and then she has really bad days. Cause it's it's hard. It's a it's a process, and I tell you what, she's probably gonna get there a lot sooner than probably any other guard besides maybe Ty, because Ty came in with it, because she's a sponge. Like she she wants it, like and she's good. Like she's talented. She can create her own shot. She's got great court vision. Um, she doesn't miss a whole lot of layups, which is good. Um, she's a playmaker, and then she's got instant chemistry with with Camilla. So that connection is 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 great for us. They know each other and she makes passes to Camilla that no one, you know, no one's expecting or you know, no one no one has that connection like they have because they play together on the AAU circuit. And then my last question, Sanaya Rivers, I remember her and watching her in high school. The best way to describe her is smooth. Can you Tell us more about her game. Gifted offensively. Gifted. Elite passer. Elite playmaker. Um, plays at her own pace. Um, can can shoot it. Is she can she can you know I didn't know her three point shot was as consistent as it as it is. Um, I was well aware of her playmaking skills. Her you know thread the needle type assist, um, ball, usually a, just a good decision maker. Defensively, she's got some work to do to catch up, uh, but there isn't anybody, there isn't anybody on our team that can do some of the things that, that she does with that basketball. I mean, it's, it's pretty magical um, once she's comfortable and confident and in the flow. So I can't call on TV people, they won't pick it up. <laughs> You're fine, Carolyn. I'm just kidding. Thanks. Corey and then Brandon. Don, uh, going back to the depth in the backcourt, what you and your coaching staff, what is it during practice that you're encouraging those particular players to do in terms of trying to separate themselves and carve out uh, minutes and, and a role within this team? Um, I mean, this is what we said from the very beginning of uh, the year is we, you know, to, to make this a special year for us, we only need what you do best. <laughs> and you, you got to be good at it. I mean, if it's space in the floor and, and knocking down open threes, then if that's the best thing that you bring, then bring that. If you are one that, you know, likes to get downhill and drive, then do that. If you, you know, if you can um, impact the game defensively, um, by squeezing through elevated screens and getting over screens and not being screened and uh, do that. If you're a great offensive rebound, do that. Um, it is when you try to do stuff that someone is best at is going to get us in trouble. So um, if you're disciplined and doing what you do best, um, it should p present you with carving out some time to get on the floor. Um, if you aren't, I mean, you got, you got to get back to the end of the line and try to work it back. But by, by then it's too late. You know, here's, here, now is the time between, um, you know, August and, and, and basically now is when you've had to, um, show that, that, that what you do best is the best for our basketball team. It's hard. I mean, it's hard. It really is hard for a, you know, it's hard for a young person on our team um, this particular year. But we're we're talking them through it, and you know, they have an understanding of what what needs to take place if they're not in the game. And their parents need to, you know, parents need to know too. So we'll 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 call them. We'll call them before our first game, sometime probably next week, and just 
just let them know that your your daughter is going to go through uh, a major change of playing a lot, not playing, or 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 playing a little, and that's going to rock them a little bit. But we just need you to be parents and support them, um, and and see them through this because. If we're trying to win a national championship, I I ask one of our players this. I ask every player this. I ask them to be their selfish selves and tell me what they want to accomplish this year. Right? So, I mean, we had a number of people that wanted all these great things, which is great. I, I want them to achieve all of that. But then I had this other player. Obviously, she's a freshman because she said, she said this. And it was the funniest thing. She said, "I just want to win the national championship. I don't even know about uh, I don't even know about all those other awards they're talking about. <laughs> and it's so simple, it's so pure, it's so innocent. And 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 it's not to say you don't have goals and dreams because as athletes you want to compete and you want to achieve, you want you want personal achievement. But when it's all said and done, we want to win a national championship." And 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 it's you know from a from a mouth of a baby to the ears of everyone else. I hope that's what we settle on. I'm gonna switch it up because I think Brandon's still getting his record sorted out. So Christy, and then to Brandon. Don, this is where the program is. You come up just short last year, so knowing you have so many of those pieces back. From a tangible perspective, are there areas that you guys are really focused on that, hey, we've got to do this this much better to get to that next step? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I think we need to be more efficient making layups. That's one. And I'm not saying that just because we were this close of uh, going to the national championship game. But that, that, that was a nemesis that plagued us all last year. Mm -hmm. Um, um I, I think we need better point guard play. Just we got to be better in those instances, um, and we're working it. We're working, we're working in the game situations all the time. So, so we're we're prepared for that. Um, I mean, it's it's you know I, I think from a physicality standpoint, I, I th it's hard for me to gauge where we are um, because we are, you know, we're playing against our practice squad. They're they're guys and they're fast, they're strong. So it's hard for me to gauge. And I ask our players, do we, are we a physical team? I ask our coaches. And they say we're not, but I, you know, I don't, I think some areas we are pretty aggressive. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I think we just have all the, the key ingredients and we just have to work the details uh, because, uh, you know, the margin of error is that small of, you know, a layup and a putback. It's that small. So we're working from that vantage point uh, rather just, you know, broader things. And to me, you got the pieces. So you go back to that point guard play that you're talking about. What have those discussions been like, knowing that Destiny can create pretty much any time she wants, but also her understanding who needs that touch and when? Yeah, I mean, that's a process continue process it's always a continue process for you know uh, you know most of point guards you know around the world that play the sport that play the game um i think with with uh henny 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 is used to playing fast and getting up and down the floor and i think sometimes she gets into too deep um on the floor and it leads to turnovers where so we're we're, we're getting her to understand just the, the, the pace and space of things. Yes, we want to play fast, um, but we want to play either fast and slow or slow to fast. You just can't be fast to fast to fast to fast. Um, slowing down will allow you to will allow you to see a little bit more and possibly not get yourself too deep into you know a space where it's there's there's nothing good that will happen. And I think um, most of uh, Henny's um, turnovers come in that space. Thank you. Brandon and then Mark. Hey, Coach. Good afternoon. How are you? What's up, B? All right. Uh, not much. Not much. So 
obviously you always reach to never get too high with the highs, too low with the lows. So this season you are opening as a um, preseason AP number one. How will you rank the morale of this year's team as number one compared to last season when you opened as number one? Um. Well, for for me, last year was the first time we opened number one, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's old news now. I mean, I I didn't really know that we didn't we never opened number one last year, and now that we're opening number one, um, in the AP, I say that AP because it is probably going to change with some other, some other uh publications and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, it's cool. I mean, but we did it before. I think it's, I think we get to, we get a do over. We get a do over. Um, and we probably get the, a, a do over, especially we get a do over with the team that really knocked us off being number one in NC State to start the season off. So um, I think it's good in that regard. And I think it's great in another regard um, because we're, we're not the likeliest team uh, to be named the number one team in the country because it doesn't fit the narrative, the national narrative. So I, I like it because it goes against um, what the decision makers of our game um, choose to choose to, you know, write that, write that story and write that narrative. Okay. And also um, just one last question, obviously with this season, um, restrictions in regards to attendance across the country, it's, pretty much been loosened um, for some places. So fans are really excited um, after not really being able to experience that full CLA atmosphere last year. So not only are they excited to be back in CLA, but also to hit the road. How does that feel to see the fans, I guess, energized and ready to travel with you all throughout this season? Well, well, considering we, we, we had what, uh, uh, 9,893 season ticket holders thus far, um, just short of a, a five-digit number. Um, and we, I think we, we of all people have, uh, we've we've created an atmosphere um, that's second to none across across the country when it comes to supporting our team, and um, it's going to be great to get back in the CLA. It's going to be get. It's going to be great to um, um, travel with our, our fans um, because we, we missed them a great deal. And um, we, we, we I mean, we're used to it. It took us it took us really a, a, a really a, a real transition playing in front of thirty five hundred people last year and even less on the road. So I, I think it's going to be great. I think women, women's basketball opening just. I guess attendance opening back up is really going to help women's basketball all across the country, and I'm I'm looking forward to it in just uh, under under two weeks. Actually, we we got an exhibition game on Monday, so so hopefully we can we can pack the house and 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 start basketball season off with uh, a lot a lot of people in Colonial Life Arena versus uh, Benedict. And extend that streak. Nice chatting with you, Don. All right, Coach. Do you want to give us an update on a season ticket number? Um, season ticket number, uh, 9893, um, catch us if you can. <laughs> that's what, that's what other, uh, other fan bases. Y'all better go support. I know y'all, y'all all on social media talking about your team, this, your team, that make sure you go and support your team and, and be in attendance, buy season tickets and, and make sure you're just not giving us lip service over on, uh, social media. Perfect. Um, Mark, go ahead. Oh, I thought we were wrapping it up. We're close oh, to wrapping it up. Come on, Mark. You on mute, Mark. How's that? Great. Sorry, I'm not a technological whiz. Sorry, Coach. How are you? Good. Good. So you've established, Coach, so much success there with that program. How do you keep the expectations and the pressure from overwhelming your players? Um, I, I mean, because we, we, we're in practice every day and we see where our weaknesses are. 
And you know that that's it. You know that checks itself. Um, uh, but we are a you know we communicate. We 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 talk to our players. We watch film every 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 day that we practice. Uh, they watch in the, you know they watch individual have the in, individual film sessions with um, our assistant coaches. Like we see uh, what where our shortcomings are. Um, and it's it's easy to keep them focused and 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 on task when we when we know that we you know we we fall short of of our expectations every day and that keeps us motivated to you know to want to do better and coach also if i could follow up you mentioned during usa basketball the pressure that was involved there for you as a head coach how would you compare the two to what you do at this moment to that um, I mean, it's not as I don't feel. I've never felt what I felt um, <laughs> um, when I was in Tokyo. I've never felt that. Um, but here, you got time. You know, there. You know, you lose two games in Tokyo. You don't medal. You don't get to the medal round. So that's a little bit of pressure. You can drop a game here and still get to the final four. You can actually probably drop four games like we did last year, I believe, and still get to the final four. Um, so, I mean, it's. It's pressure, um, you know, but it's familiar pressure. And when it's familiar pressure, um, you know how to you know how to handle them. You know the expectations of it, and and you're just it's just routine. I, I mean, the the same the the same uh, habits that we ask our players to form are the same habits that we have as a coaching staff to to stay on task and, and get our get our team better every day. Cool. Thanks.